Uh, let's start our conversation, and we would have in the background some of your latest shows that I think are already a statement to understand your story and your approach to design. Uh, my, fir my first question, because I'm sure everybody is thirsty about knowing that, uh, and I know, I'm aware that your story is pretty peculiar as a designer. Can you tell us how did you start all your business, all your design activity, and which were the key points in your career according to that? Wow, you make me going back so long time ago. You know? <laughs> I hope my brain still works about that. <laughs> No, well, it's, it's a joke. Uh, you know, I, I, I actually, um, I came from a retailer family. Uh, my, fashion, my fashion background starts in my family. My mother and my father, they was kind of uh, fashion um, guys. And, and uh, you know, they used to carry all the brand in the 60s and the 70s in Italy. Uh, and uh, there was, uh, so I was, I have the privilege to growing up, you know, with clothes around me and uh, all this kind of uh, stimulation about that, you know. So, in other words, I growing up seeing clothes every single day of my life, which I enjoy so much. And uh, I understand that something was going on because I was quite obsessed with clothes, actually. And the first day of the school in, in, uh, in, uh, when I was six years old, actually, in Italy, you have to have uniform, black uniform. And, uh, you know, I was the guy that uh, that day I take off my uniform and I want my clothes on. And that's what's going on for a week. And after, uh, the teacher and the school call my family and say, you know, this guy is too difficult, you have to bring in another school. And by chance, my mother, my father, they say, no, no. And they bring me in the psychologist for a month. And uh, the psychologists say, this guy is completely right, just won't show his clothes. And, uh, you know, that's what I was. So I have pictures still now that uh, for five years, I was the only guy in thousand guy with my beautiful clothes. And I used, when I was 10 years, I used papillon. I was really obsessed about that. So, and my brother, which was two years older, he didn't recognize me as a brother because, you know, he was ashamed <laughs> about that. And it's nice because we still have picture with me laughing and all the boy with the black stuff. So it's, I, you know, it's starting something starts to going on. And um, yeah, by the way, then I study art. I was good on you know make sculpture designing. And uh, I went to Milano when I was 18. I, st I studied um, sculpture in fine art, Brera. After that, I was attracted by fashion, by the way. Um, I have an experience uh, for some reason, which is a long story. Uh, I went to Japan and I started to work with a master of fashion at the time in the 80s, which was Yoji Yamamoto. And, you know, it was the 80s, so I learned a lot there, a lot of technique, a lot of discipline of the work, because I was very, you know, from the south of Italy, full of energy, completely, you know, looking for. and. Um, I uh, was uh, just, uh, you know, the great what I can do at that moment. And uh, when I was there after two years and a half, more or less, I have a brother, which uh, we found Costa Machina together, we built together. Uh, for, he was a student, and uh, then he made, uh, he was working fashion, but production distribution, and uh, with one design in the 80s. He was partner, and uh, in a couple of years, three years, they get this brand called Romeo Gilles get very huge. And uh, my brother was partner, he made a lot of money very young. He said, why don't come back, you know, we build together something. And uh, that was how we start, you know. I started the company uh, with me and my brother, and uh, still now, after many years, we're still here. <laughs> That's fantastic, but that is something very interesting I would like to underline, because it's like what we do at school when you come to our lectures to our students. I think that um, in these uh, room. There are many people that are thirsty to understand, uh, which is the Italian in-depth characteristic you work upon in your label. And uh, I think that your story, studying in, I mean, not studying, but having to practice in Japan with such masters as Yoji, and still being very Italian and traveling so much, and having a brand that is recognized internationally, uh, it's interesting to understand in my opinion, which could be the balance between your heritage, your culture that is always very strong in your creation, but also very international. You know, uh, when, I, uh, when you work, uh, when you start your experience with uh, such a master, you know, uh, there is two possibilities. One possibility is that you are completely absorbed by that 
strong energy personality and aesthetic. Another way that that experience make you, in a way, stimulate your brain to find your way, but don't forget what is your experience was. And uh, I think, you know, the point was when I was working with Yoji, which was uh, I learned to cut, to make, stitch and everything, you know, also technical thing that I didn't know to do at all. I just enjoy. I was the best, uh, you know, uh, shopper at my, my store and my family one day say, you don't, don't, please don't come anymore in the store <laughs> because you are so expensive, you know, we have to sell this clothes. I was, you know, best customer without paying. But there I learned the other side, you know, uh, of the business, the, the true work and the true discipline, the true difficult, you know, point that you reach when you are a designer. And I enjoy it in a way. But the point was when I, you know, when I start to think I want to be a designer, I said, you know, what is, I have to be true and authentic. So I have to be myself, I have to express a vision, original vision, if I want, you know, be happy with myself. And what was the, the point that I found out that I always, since I was a child, I enjoy very much the Italian traditional tailoring. I thought tailoring, perfection of Italian tailoring, for me, it's, uh, it's kind of roots which uh, you know, I want to deal with. And this is my culture, my experience. But in the same time, the experimentation of Japan and let's say, you know, the sense of, uh, you know, let's say also graphic and synthesis, which is some kind of minimal traditional attitude of Japanese, is very modern and interesting. So I try in a way to bring some of this experience and bring in my Italian culture. And it worked because uh, finally I thought it was, um, you know, a modern approach. And uh, so it's, it's, uh, it's my vision of fashion. For me, you know, I'm, I'm really much more in the style than fashion. I think fashion is very important because you have to progress and, uh, you know, every collection must go a bit so forward. But in the same time, I'm obsessed with the style. For me, style is much more important than fashion because I think in the end, the designer I respect uh, is the designer that they have a strong heritage and you can recognize even without see the label inside. That's why I like Madame Chanel, because I thought she just had a vision of aesthetic. She's not, you know, just a pure designer. And in that sense, I think, um, yeah, I'm a bit maybe different from the other designer because um, I'm not always looking for a trend, but I look to progress my vision of aesthetic and to just, you know, try to move a little bit and, and work with that. So that's pushed me to mix uh, two obsession of my vision, aesthetic vision. One is the roots, as I said before, means that te incredible technique, incredible, you know, tailoring and pattern and all that, and quality. And the other one is to push forward a little bit in the future. So, for example, 10 years ago, I started, I was, I think, uh, we start. I, I made one jacket, men's jacket, complete tailor, but uh, without stitching, it's just technology and tailoring. It was fantastic, we still do it. We was the first, I think, now we can see some in the market. And uh, uh, for example, also in 2005, I experimented the bag with um, a pan <laughs> solar, uh, solar panel we, we, yeah. uh, with a German company. We, we win a lot of prize about that. And also, you know, uh, we experiment, you know, some kind of mixing fabric, um, you know, traditional fabric with some and I think in this mix, uh, uh, also in 2001, we are the first company in the world that uh, we make uh, uh, online show, um, you yeah. know, streaming, streaming. On live. So I always think that uh, my obsession with tech is not technology. I think because I growing up with my father was a modernist, you know, uh, he, he, he wants to look always in, the, he wants to live in a new house, you know, wants ever, he wants design, and this influenced me a lot. So. I'm a guy that, uh, but in the same time, we, we, I come from an old traditional, you know, area of Italy, wherever. So there is this, uh, you know, let's say feeling in my spirits to combine these two things. So tradition and future together, which I think build the real quality of the stuff. Because when you make just futuristic things and there is no roots, it's felt after short life, short time of life. But when you build something the roots, uh, it's a potential, the potential of this vision is quite, you know, strong and powerful, I think. I think you made a statement that is really relevant, uh, and uh, I slightly disagree with you, because you said um, that you're working more on uh, style than fashion, while there are other designers that are working more on fashion somehow. And don't you think, 
at the end of the day, that nowadays in the contemporary world, it makes much more sense to work on the identity, the, the DNA of a brand, than just following trends to accomplish some sort of potential request of the customer. Don't you think that this is the future yeah, of fashion yeah, somehow? Yeah, of course, I answered before about that. that, you know, and I said that, um, you know, for me, that is my vision, and I think it's, uh, it's the strongest point of view now in fashion. Uh, but uh, uh, for me, this is the only way, you know, in general. It's not just in fashion, I think even in movie or whatever. Today, the, the planet is very crowded. And I think the talent, in a way, it gets more... Because of the information, you know, there is more... The quality is improving quite a lot. And, you know, everywhere you can find uh, uh, a beautiful, uh, you know, things. For example, I went, yes, in the mall in Dubai, you know, and I went 11 years ago, and the quality that now reached the, 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 the mall, it's amazing. You can compete with New York. I see the shoe, whatever, and, and it's unbelievable how everywhere now, you know, there is no distance anymore. What does it mean? This this means that the, the quality improves a lot. But still, what makes the difference is exactly what you say, the strong point of view, the strong sense of, of design and style. So, um, in general, now we are, you know, um, I mean, with the students or whatever, my recommendation is to work a lot in the DNA to develop a point, strong point of view. Because maybe you can take a wave and you can be in trend for three, four, five seasons. But if you want to have a strong statement, if you want to have a strong career, if you want to be a relevant designer in the history of fashion, you have to deal uh, with uh, DNA and with the strong style. But this was always been like that, you know. Today more because uh, uh, there is, a, as I said before, there is a, a beautiful middle stuff in the aesthetic you know, world. So to just come out, you have to really have a strong point of view. But always was like that, and in every business, in the movie, in the music, whatever. You know, uh, if you don't have a strong style, you can make a beautiful song. But to make a beautiful career musician, you have to be strong, you know, and be recognizable as a, as a sound and as music, as a chef, as whatever you want. So the point is that um, I think for the young generation, they are more lucky in a way because they have much more information that I have in my life, you know. I have to look for and I have to go under the, the you know, uh, whatever garbage to find some good things. But uh, now everything is so you know, easy in a way, and it's possible, accessible. So you click and you can see whatever you want. But in the same time, that uh, you know, is a stimulation to push a little bit forward and to found and to look for your point of view and strong and, you know, and try to even get stronger. Anyway, the, the geniality and talent win always. Yes. <laughs> um, there is another thing, um, two other things that are characterizing your work. One uh, that uh, I've personally seen uh, in Milan uh, that I really loved was the installation that you did with Giorgio Frigo for the spring, for, uh, spring summer collection uh, and also the work with Bassi Nasdaq. One thing that is interesting is about, about your work as a designer is that you're not just using contemporary art as an inspiration, but you actively collaborate with artists in, to have an exchange in terms of concept. Can you tell us something more about that? Because it's, I think it's one of your characteristics that are more... Well, I'm a curious guy, you know, and uh, what I need is just, you know, a strange energy. And, uh, for example, is what you say relevant because um, it's very relevant. Because, for example, with this guy, I thought, uh, you know, normally what I'm trying to do is to find some artists that are uh, not necessarily young. These, they are young, but uh, they have some, as well, point of view that inspire me or give me uh, energy, you know. And... Um, is not to take one piece of art and bring in the show. It doesn't make any sense. The point is to make something together, to work in the project, to give them a briefing, and to come back them with the strong, you know, stimulation for me that is including in the project. Because uh, I thought for me, uh, I mean, in the show, when the people came in the last two show and they saw the art and the, and the show, it was linked together. Yeah. And uh, I think, you know, artists sometimes... Uh, they are more pure because they have this sense of, you know, um, I mean, the good artists, they, they are linked to the, let's say, universe of creativity in, in, the, in much more free way than we have the market, we have this, the industry, we are organization. So we have a lot of barrier, you know, even if we are strong and strong, you know, we have to deal anyway. But a good artist is not pure. It's just himself, the ambience, the energy, and must give this potential emotion 
and this uh, beautiful, you know, make, make, you know, make think the people, move the heart to the people, the stomach of the people. And uh, I realized that, uh, you know, it's for me as a personal experience, it's just uh, I get richer from that, uh, you know, that point of view. And uh, it's important for me as a designer, you know, um, sometimes my brother says you have to stay in your chair and work, but, um, you know, I'm a curious guy, so I need some time, you know, this kind of collaboration. And that's really interesting, and I think it makes a difference and a statement also for the new generation of designers, meaning that it's not about following trends or looking at cahiers de tendance or this kind of stuff. It's about building an identity, having an artistic approach, and developing a DNA as a person and as a brand itself. And according to that, uh, one thing that I think, but correct me if I'm mistaken, uh, could be really correct about your work is that you're an overall designer. You're not just a fashion designer because you are known to be kind of maniac getting control on every aspect. <laughs> also architecture of your spaces, of your stores, even collaborating with other people. But you, you really have an overall control on the image of the brand. That you is know, amazing. I think I was a lucky boy because, um, as I said, this part of my family, since I was boy, you know, I have a chance to, you know, um, my first work actually was to design a shop of my family when I was 15. And uh, they, my family saw that I was quite talented to design space. I've, at that same time, I, I developed a big sense of space, which I love it still now. And my father and my mother said, why you don't design the shop? And it was a success. And then that's why I continued and I make a couple of houses that still exist for my family. And then, you know, I make it some kind of different, you know, stuff. And still I make uh, shop, my shop, you know. Uh, that we, we just make actually a big shop now in Milano, the new one, in the new area, which is fantastic. If you pass by Milano, you have to go and visit it. It's next to Corso Como. It's just completely new, hair, new city, let's say, mm -hmm. very modern, very futuristic and very beautiful. And I designed that shop, which is, uh, which is the last, you know, production. And the idea was to mix, in that case, for example, that sense of modern luxury with some kind of underground. So I found one uh, incredible marble in the south of Sara, in the, the border of Sudan that is not used yet so much. And uh, in this case, it's, it's very beautiful because it's a kind of very strange black with a little gold inside and, and pearl color. And I put this kind of piece, I was inspired by the art uh, povera in, uh, in the 60s in Italy, you know, Cunelli, yeah. so this amazing art that now is very popular. And I bring it the concrete and this kind of piece of marble, whatever. So it's, you know, it's, it's um, I think in my idea, if you are a designer, you have to have a full vision of aesthetic. And uh, that's the point, you know. For example, recently, tomorrow, we will be delivering the car. We make collaboration with Renault. It's a yeah. big stuff. And, uh, you know, when the Renault come to me, I didn't want to really make it because they said, you know, the big car company, they are not full of you, they want to change, you know, they say, okay, you do that, then they say, no, we cannot do it. And they start to say, you know, I, I don't know. And then they say, no, we are open. And then we make this concept car, uh, which is all covered by 3D leather, is a technology incredible, it's a leather, complete 3D, with kind of metal inside. And from that car we develop, you know, and this car, which is 25,000 car, uh, which can be beautiful. And then I say, okay, but if you want me to do it, I want to work with uh, Garrone. Garrone is the guy that win uh, Cannes a few, few seasons yeah. ago, amazing very Italian director, director, very important director, one of the best Italian. And I thought, for sure they say no. And they say yes. And finally, the result is online. Uh, the, the, the short movie series is amazing, beautiful. The car is fantastic. So. I did it because I can reach my quality. And for me, I don't want compromise. I can do any, you know, I like to touch other things, but until I can, you know, be sure that I'm happy. That is, you know, the point, you know, to, to, to push my, my sometimes far, far from fashion, which is a pleasure as well, but it's important very much to, you know, keep the same kind of quality. But did you ever say no to a proposal that would have been economically very interesting but we're not fitting your criteria somehow. well you know i'm i think we are one of the oldest and uh, and only relevant independent company maybe exists in the planet so for sure i say no a uh, few times but um, the first time i was too young 
And uh, when I say no, it was 2000, and they bought it, uh, some, many companies, they bought it, Emil Lang, they bought it, Jill Sander. Yeah. At that time, it was tons of money. It was really crazy. And yeah. uh, maybe I'm mistaken, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think so. It was big money. By the way, my brother said, you wait and one week, but you have to decide because, you know, this is your future. I think it it's, it's was a big amount. I mean, I can have seven, eight life, maybe ten. And... Um, after a week, I say no. I don't know why. Don't ask me why. But I felt, for me, it's, you know, I'm in Alpha Happy and I, I don't miss anything in life. But my, my, it's important to have, a, you know, for me, uh, to have airplane or have a good life, it, it's, it's important, but it's not that important. It's more important that, you know, I'm happy with myself and, uh, you know, I, I, don't, I don't lose the energy to produce the stuff. So... Uh, I chose the, you know, uh, independent, independent, let's say, direction. But I think it's, it's just very personal. It doesn't make, it's not good or bad what I did. It. It's just because it's uh, relevant for my personality. And the most important thing, most important suggestion for everybody, you have to be loyal to yourself. When you are loyal to yourself, you express your power. And you exp- whatever you mistake or not, but finally your power come out. When you compromise in any field, can be in money, can be in design, can be whatever you want, this is learned from me in my life, that when you compromise, you get weaker. So the point, if you want to get stronger, you felt, then you come back, then you go, then you go. But finally, you arrive to the point, just if you're a lawyer to your personality, your true, authentic spirits. Um, that is, I believe in life, that I won't continue my life like that until, you know, uh, I, I do this business, and any creative business. And this is also my suggestion to the new generation. Be loyal to yourself, work, get richer inside, get richer of experience, get richer of, of cultural uh, motivation. Because another point which I think is very important for the new generation is that now it's very ge- easy to get lazy. You know, you can get lazy because you don't need to read the book because just you click and you can read, you know, a short story of the book in two minutes and then you say, oh, wow, I understand now. Or you can go and... It's different. It's very important, I think, to charge yourself of a cultural experience that, in the end, make a difference. So you, you're going to have much longer life, much deeper life, and much important and interesting point of view. So the point is that the internet and whatever can make you know, the new generation easy and la- lazy. So my point is work on the cultural point because this is an investment that you make on the quality of your work that's going to stay forever. Whatever it is, culture thing, and culture means to read, to, to, to work, to visit this museum, to do that, to understand more, to go deep and deep and deep. Because more you do that, more even the superficial uh, thing gets stronger. You know, I love fashion because there is two contradictions. One contradiction, which is superficiality, which I love, which I think, uh, you know, I enjoy to have a stupid, you know, clothes. I always say for me, clothes is like Prozac, but less dangerous and more expensive. Because, you know, every, if you feel tired of a girl, she just fights with a boyfriend and she's just, you know, insane that day. Just a beautiful shoes, a nice bag, a nice, and she feels completely different. That's true. That's amazing. I think it's part of fashion and it's fantastic. And we have to take fashion for this, you know. And then there is another part which is more deep that work more in, in the customer, in something that you say, wow, that age was defined by that style and that kind of stuff. So... I like this contradiction between deep and very, very superficial, even stupid approach of fashion, which I think is our life. Because you cannot deep all the time, otherwise you get boring with yourself. You cannot superficial, otherwise you get stupid. So in this kind of, you know, let's say, um, space, balance. there is a, a real life. And in this, pa- in this space of, uh, you know, experience, there is uh, my experience and my suggestion to, you know, future designer, which we are waiting for new talent to come, because, you know, I think it's important. Uh, the, the, the planet needs talent. Because what's happened also is, uh, that's, that's why it's important, and uh, I push, you know, in this direction, because sometime now, for example, the quality gets so, so beautiful, you know, but I was a bit shocked yesterday, because I went in the mall, and there was all the big brands, Saint Laurent, they have the same bag, almost the same shoes, almost the same color, which is not fair and not say, and not, it's not good. You need somebody to say, listen, baby, this is different. And this is the geniality. This is a different point of view. This is what 
the young generation should do. You know, they should go against what is work and against what is the market. Because if you follow the market, you never can reach that point. You never can make competition. Yeah. And uh, the point is to develop your strong points of view, to be independent in your mind, to, to, to just have a different vision. And what we need as human beings, we need always to be stimulated about uh, talent and geniality that I hope we can. You know why I love him as a teacher in my school. <laughs> um, one more thing, and then I think that, I don't know how much time we still have for some questions and answers from people that I'm sure we will want to interact with you more. Um, you are very Italian, we say yeah. the deep Italian brand, uh, and we can recognize that through every kind of aspect in your work. You are very international. You work, you are one amongst the few ones in Italy that has started working with celebrities on a friendship base, more yeah. than on a press base, because uh, you are a rocker and a rebel <laughs> at the end of the day. And know. everything is very rock in your work somehow. And uh, I mean, the people that, I, I remember still the, the first work uh, you did with Jen, um, oh gosh, I forgot the name. The actress that was wearing. Oh, uh, I don't know. Um, the with the, with her band. Ah, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, okay. Okay, um, I beg your pardon. I forgot the name. Uh, She's and, crazy but amazing. Yeah, I, I know. Yeah, the, this is why she came to my mind because it was kind of natural born killer. What's the yes, name? Yes, the, the, the actress of yeah. natural born killers. Okay. Juliet. Yeah. Juliet Lewis. She's my Thank you so also. much. <laughs> and it's the age. Sorry. Huh? <laughs> And you are friends with Mick Jagger, with Keanu Reeves, uh, Ilari Swank. I mean, all the Etanok. I mean, all the kind of people you know, from the field that have a specific approach. I don't know. Again, I was lucky. I think I dress all the most incredible master in music. Still do it. The young now, the all the, the you know my generation and the, even the new generation. And that, don't ask me why. It's just natural because we don't have any office. Last year, you know, we received a phone call from Lady Gaga, and Lady Gaga, I thought, doesn't match my style. And then, you know, she said, I want uh, your clothes, you know, because I have some projects. I said, okay. She selected the clothes, we sent the clothes, and finally she made uh, the video of the black, the noir, the fragrance she made in Paris, completely costume national, you know, the net top, the leather skirt, the, the everything. So, we didn't, and, and, and the assist of her, to my assistant, that all the, houses, they get crazy, they have tons of clothes, money, whatever, to dress because, you know, it was such a statement. Can you imagine Lady Gaga make a fragrance wow. dress, you know, in the Prada, whatever. And she chose costume. Still now, you know, it's, uh, it's, it's uh, don't ask me why, but we have this strange relation. And uh, I think I was lucky also, as you said, that uh, naturally, I, I'm not such a social person. I can be social, I can be anything because uh, in a little bit, I, I like to be everything, but I'm quite, you know, I like to be reserved more or less, so I'm not a public relation person. But uh, I was lucky to have uh, established an amazing you know, relation with everybody. Uh, I just, for a moment, will go, I want to go sad and then happy just to, for the audience. You know, uh, recently the, the, the girlfriend of Mick Jagger uh, passed away, she killed herself. Yeah. And she was our best friend because, uh, you know, she was a designer. We produced her clothes for five years, you know, oh, okay. uh, in our factory. And also, we was the, I was the guy, and me and my brother, they introduced each other, because the, in the part, 11, 12 years ago, in the party of Costa Nacional in Paris, we introduced Laurent to Mick, oh. and, you know, be, was the best friend as well. So, uh, you know, it's, the, I was lucky in that uh, contribution of these amazing people, and I want to remember Laurent because she was an amazing energy, she was an amazing person, she's still in my heart as a person. And uh, I was lucky not to meet all these people. And then another funny story that's uh, interesting, I want to explain you, is uh, when I was working with David Bowie, which was one of my heroes when I was young, you know. And there is in my book, there is a picture of uh, David Bowie. And the idea was uh, David Bowie to make a picture of Full Cost National with, with the wolf, wild wolf. And, you know, we was only in the studio waiting, David Bowie coming and was a little bit late, and the wolf was with some guy that take care, the owner of the wild wolf, you know, they was crazy, they was shouting, screaming, like everybody was so panicked and afraid because, you know, the big wild wolf. And then suddenly me, uh, David arrived, completing in that set where the photography, everybody was ready, you know, 
And he take that dog, if you saw the picture in the book, it's amazing. And the dog, they just get quiet in the moment. The wolf. The wolf, sorry. <laughs> and uh, the wolf, they get quiet in the moment. So that energy that we felt, because when, when, uh, when David came, everybody felt that amazing energy that the men have, beautiful, amazing. You know, the, do the, the wolf, they feel it as well. So they get quiet and they just, just get down, you know, they just get down as a little dog. So uh, that, uh, you know, is another example to explain you how the talent sometimes that to, is lucky to meet, you know, fashion, it's an amazing business because you have, you're lucky to meet so, such an incredible people. They give you a lot, a lot of energy and privilege, you know, to discover also that, that you know, fantastic personality. So it's, I just am lucky, wow. I'm, I'm uh, you know, uh, and uh, I, I'm really happy to work in the business, actually. But <laughs> I don't think it's only a matter of luck, actually, because you said it's a hard work behind everything. Yeah, yeah. I think uh, I think uh, I believe, you know, that work is uh, is the engine, is the engine of everything. I recently read actually something that with twenty thousand hours of uh, you know serious work in any matter, you can be near to be a genius. So it mm -hmm. means something. It means that. Wow. Uh, you know, if you work a lot in something, you, you can reach a good level. By the way, I think you have to be luck too, and uh, luck is yourself, your energy, to be positive and try to, you know, put uh, yourself at the best condition. Uh, that's why, you know, for me it's important, uh, you know, when I select the people around me, I'm, I'm, I, I'm, I'm not, I mean, I'm not afraid of anything. I just take care about my stuff. When I saw somebody which is even talented but negative, for me I can't have it because I believe in the positive energy and I believe, you know, that uh, when you want to build something, you have to forget anything else and just be positive and strong and be, you know, focus, focus on that. So another suggestion for you guys that want to be a designer, it's very important. Uh, just one last thing before leaving you to the platform here. Um, you have been showing your shows in uh, different capitals of fashion. Yeah. And then you decided to bring it back to Milan, yeah. which was a strong statement in a moment that is recognized as a kind of crisis in Europe yeah. in general. Um, and I think also on the business side, and it is relevant what you, what you did. And I would like you to explain a bit, because for instance, here in Dubai, there is a growing market, an, an enormous interest toward design, toward the business of design as a whole, and that really doing a fantastic job here in Fashion Forward, building a platform of education and business to make the business growth. And you went somehow uh, in, a, in a very peculiar direction in a moment in which it was unexpected. Well, you know, um, the point was that a couple of years ago, Italy had a very, very big crash in terms of economy and, and you know, everything. Even the fashion week was affected by that. So what happened was that uh, many people, I mean, uh, important people in the, in the fast fashion council, they just asked me, we need that, you know, to show to the Italian and international that somebody, I was, I, I mean, I show, I was showing Costume National since 20 years in Paris, in, from the 90s, I almost started in Paris. And then, you know, Frank Casozzani came to me and other people came to me and asked me, you know, can you just come back and bring your energy in Italy? We need it, uh, to show that somebody believes in our country. Honestly speaking, uh, I was, you know, a bit uh, kind of confused because I said, you know, my life is in Paris on my emotion and my story. Even my fashion was relevant there. I, I get famous in Paris. So how I can come back and, you know, I miss here since ever and I don't know anything about it. Then when, uh, you know, I feel touched, I, I thought, yeah, but this is my country and uh, my value is in Italy and I think I have to support that. So I didn't think it's, I, I can have advantage or disadvantage. I said I should do it and I should bring that energy here and, uh, and that's it. So I came back here in Italy last season, actually, not last, the season before the summer, uh, I found this amazing space that nobody saw before. What is a museum yeah. under construction, which is fantastic. It's crazy. And, uh, you know, I thought that finally the people appreciate that. And the, inter in the international scene, I have a lot of positive comments, a beautiful, you know, audience. 
And the point was that in Paris, you have the best audience, you know, the best journalists in the world, they come to the fashion show in Paris. So I thought maybe, you know, something different. And it was exactly the same. So everybody appreciate that. And, uh, you know, I was happy. Something has changed now, you know, in a way, because uh, it's important. What I said to Frank and all the people in Italy, said, yeah, it's important. But in the same time now, it's important, the capital, but it's more a social thing. Because now, whatever you show, you know, you are in Internet in a minute. And for some reason, you know, everybody can see you everywhere in the world. But as a statement, as a status, I was very, very happy, you know. Uh, of course, as I said now, you know, uh, fashion, for example, now you start the fashion council here, you know, it's a beautiful, you know, project which will be amazing because uh, I think they are involved the most famous architect in the world. And this is, uh, uh, what can I say, is a good start because if this project starts with the quality of this architect, like Norma Fossil, Bill and that, it means that... Uh, it will all start to, with the right star, you know, with the, with the great, you know, um, I, in my opinion, it's just a great start. So it, maybe something can born here for all the Middle East area and, and make some kind of status. This means that now there is, it will be even much more capital and the competition will be on the quality, let's say, of everything, organization, designer, you know, architecture and all of that. And I think that the money there is here, the energy there is here, the investment, the people, and even you are want to come here, you know, this is important yeah. because it means that your, your knowledge, your history, your part of your experience in Italy and, and what your, you know, your secrets and, and all of that you're going to share here, means that this potential is one of the, maybe the capital of, of Middle East, you know, to make a capitalized fashion. Of course, everybody must work hard, but I think is important and I think uh, this it, it, it will influence all, all Africa because believe it or not there is a lot of talent in Africa that they yeah. want to be a designer so this can be the capital for example for all Africa for fashion you know then you have Paris, Milan, New York and Tokyo so that's that's what I, my picture let's say oops that's my picture in the next future means that uh, you know will be some kind of you know place where the fashion will be hot and will be center of the business and uh, you know uh, also we don't have to forget that fashion without business doesn't make any sense fashion is an expensive business you need a lot of money it's not art art you can be yourself you just painting you write you you know do what you want but with, uh, with um, you know, fashion, you need organization. If you want to reach quality, you need a lot of money, big amount of money. So means you need the market. And fashion without market is nothing. So that's why this is start to be very big market, is improving better. And I hope also me to make something we was talking with friends together, you know, that maybe it's the time to watch seriously. I tell you some information very interesting. In our shop in the world, we have a flagship store. Of course, the big customer still in the last few years, they are Chinese, the Russian, and Japanese and American. Uh, what's happened, we saw in the last year, which is interesting, I think. Uh, in the credit card, we are huge improvement of uh, Middle East young generation. They come to buy in our shop. That's very, very interesting. It means that... Even the ginger, you know, when you are talking about Middle East, sometimes you talk about, you know, overall, overdone, too much, whatever. Means that the young generation develop another aesthetic sense that is more international, that is more, you know, Absolutely. in different direction. So that's why I think this market start to be mature and interesting because there is a many, many different possibilities and many aesthetic in that sense. So um, I'm happy to be here today in your space. I mean, here to uh, meet these people. But I'm even happy because I understand more what's happening in this part of the world and the energy there is here again and, and the potential and the potentiality of the future of this place. Any questions for Enya specifically? I know that, uh, you know, I was in London, sorry, last uh, week. Uh, and uh, the, the first question was quite, you know, everybody was shamed. It's come a lot. So the first is the most, you know, is you. Yes, actually, okay, you said something really start. interesting about creating your own identity and style and not following the market per se. But then at the end, obviously, it's a big investment and, you know, what's in demand in the market sells. So 
where do you draw the line of creating your identity, but also creating something that would sell in the market? No, don't misunderstand me. Uh, I think if your identity doesn't work, there is no relation with the market. It's, you have to work on it. It doesn't mean that uh, you know you jump out with some I don't know couple of pizza in the T-shirts and mozzarella, and your identity work. You have to make something that makes sense with the time that you live, with the vision that you have, and you have. You have to have a geniality, you have to cultivate your talent. So when I say the identity means you have to have strong point of view, you know what I mean? Um, so I don't think there is contradiction between market and identity at all. Um, it's true that when I start to be a designer, maybe you can start with, I don't know, 3 million, 4 million euro, 5 maybe. Now, maybe to start to, to be a designer, you'll be 30 million, 40 million, because the scale is much different. Because it's a global market, because the competition is big. So, what I said before again, you have to have strong identity, you have to work on it, but you have to invest to, to find a way also, you know, to invest the money. Because uh, the competition today is very, very, very difficult. And there is two ways if you are a young designer. First, the traditional way, as a, the Renaissance in Italy, you try to work with the master if you can, and then, you know, you develop yourself, and then you found, and then you grow, and then you found your opportunity, or try to, you know, found your opportunity. But again, fashion, what I'm talking is my point of view, which is a designer, but fashion has many, many levels of business. So if you are talking about business, it's completely different to the picture. Because if you are talking about business, even you don't need talent sometimes. Look at Zara or look at h and They don't need talent. They just need an incredible talent to produce model of business, so which is completely different than my talent. So I was referred to the talent to, to be creative person, to be, you know, relevant in the fashion history. But in the fashion, you have many, many, many different possibilities and opportunities. So that is the beauty of fashion. Depends where you want to allocate yourself. You know. Okay. So, oh, yes. Welcome back to Dubai. It's been 11 years. Uh, it's great to have you. Um, uh, similar to sort of what he said, what he asked you, um, I make shoes and I'm sort of struggling with the fact that um, I'm looking for investors and when they come in, they sort of dedicate or dictate, rather, um, what your design sensibilities should be. Um, but I, I've always looked up to Carol Christian Paul and the <coughs> fact that he never advertises and he doesn't go out looking for customers, you know, no media, um, none of the celebrity stuff. So my question is, if someone dictates where your design should go, um, you as a designer, um, what would you sort of would you sort of struggle and not sort of uh, make it in the market and just sort of be low key? Um, or would you rather sort of give up your design sensibility and just try to make money? I know it's a personal question, but... Uh, you, 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 you know, I think it's... I mean, it's very personal, you know, and... Uh, I don't know, it depends on your talent, where you are stronger, you know, and... Uh, my suggestion is... Uh, my experience, you know, and, uh, but uh, again, I don't think there is just one possibility and one, you know, the planet show us that uh, there is, today, in the same time, there is many, many different models of business that, you know, they are successful. That's very interesting because uh, before it was not like that. The model of the business was just one. And this is the modernity. This is true, the technology. The, the technology show us that uh, there is a lot of diversity, and when there is sense, when there are well-organized work. Again, to come back to your question is, I don't know, uh, I enjoy much more to make exactly what I want to do than make uh, 100 box, because I know that 100 box, they will come later. So that is my personal opinion. So I said, I don't want to follow the money, but I want to follow my creativity and the, the money come back. And I was right in a way, but uh, this is, I cannot say this is the right thing to do. This is one, one thing, you know, and, uh, and uh, I really think uh, you are young and you are lucky to live now. 
this universe, this planet was, uh, you know, it's so connected and there is so many opportunities in a way. Because everybody says there is crisis, but it's not true. There is an opportunity incredible. The planet was never so rich as it is now. You know, you have to think that just 30 years ago, the rich people was everywhere, but very few. Now the, the richness is, you know, is much, it, still we have to work a lot because there is a lot of people we travel. But, you know, every, there is this kind of uh, we share, you know, so much information and so much everything. You know, for example, you are a designer of shoes. And you know if you want to go, do a good shoes, you have to deal with Italy. Because we turn open a, a huge factory in China. After three years, they have to close. And they open in uh, near Venezia because this is the best place to make shoes in the world. There is no way. Even if they make huge investment in China because, you know, we turn our power and money they have. They couldn't make it. So, but you know, before just the few people know these secrets, let's say, that now everybody knows where to go to produce, which make a difference. Because if you start to produce your shoes in, I don't know, here maybe there is no tradition, even if your ideas are amazing, you never reach that level. But if you go with your design in Italy, for sure, your product, your design can be fantastic. You're going to be happy because there is history there of that. So this means that... Uh, this information that we share, or the planet we share, it gives you also the chance to arrive more fast to the point, to the satisfaction of your creativity. That's interesting, I think. And that is the opportunity that, as a young designer, you have to take. And then you have to be lucky and follow also the life. You know, sometimes, uh, you know, I was in love with some girl, and then I saw another one, and I went to the other one, and it was my life. So you never know, you know, I mean, you believe that is the one, and then I was totally wrong. Just I, So it's... Just follow, you know, what's, what's happening in your life. That's what's my suggestion. And if I may add something, because you were mentioning Carol Christian Powell, that is a friend of mine and also an alumni, and I know exactly his story. And he made a very strong statement and a lot of sacrifice. An incredible, I, I can tell you, huge sacrifice. He's also one of the greatest tailors ever. And he does everything himself directly in his lab. And he refused, as Ennio did, many other possibilities. And as Ennio did from his experience, this is one choice. Uh, but I really believe also on a, let, let me come back to an educational point of view somehow, <laughs> uh, that you really have to uh, respect your DNA as a designer, because otherwise the big risk that you run, even though it will take more time, is that you will do a product <laughs> that in which you don't believe, first, and if you don't believe in that, yeah, how can you yeah. convince someone else? For example, if you saw the first picture of, um, the first drawing of Picasso, you know, the, the very first, they look like Toulouse-Lautrec. What I want to say, or if you saw the first Michelangelo look like Verrocchio, yeah. what I want to say is that, of course, everybody who starts, in my suggestion is copy what you like. You know what I mean? When, when uh, you know, when Leonardo started, he was copying all the masters, he was a young, and, and you have to do it that. You have to copy exactly what you like, even because it never comes the same. But if you, you know, work on it, and, and you just, you know, just build, your talent and your vision come out. So I don't want to say you're born with your identity. You have to work for that, you know, and, and work. I recently met this uh, billionaire girl that she's so wealthy and so lucky. She moved in Italy. She bought, is a Russian girl. Uh, it's very uh, sympathetic. I don't know if I'm so nice. Sympathetic. Nice, yeah. And uh, one day she just won't meet me. Uh, and she's super rich, a jet airplane, whatever. And she bought a um, fashion house because she was tired and spoiled. And, you know, she bought a house called Vionet. And, you know, she came to me and said, I want to meet you. I want you to tell me something. I want, you know, not as a guru, but please explain me something about fashion, this and that, because, you know, I just bought it, I want to know. And I said to her, you know, you have to work hard and try, you know, to build the identity. Going back, look what was this house and try to build it. And uh, I think a couple of years passed since I met this girl, and yeah. recently somebody said to me, you know, it's the first time we saw this girl working in her life, because it's really <laughs> hard and really tough. Because she wake up every morning, she move in Milan, she have an office, she, you know, she do what she have to do. Means that uh, finally, also, you know, whatever you want to produce, you have to work. 
Even she's billionaire, she jet private, whatever she has, she understands that with fashion you have to work. And that is another lesson, you know. Uh, if you want to reach your identity, if you want to reach the market, if you want to make money, if you want to make, you know, a status of your creativity, it doesn't matter who you are or where you're from. You have to deal with the work because it's just work. But, but we have to say fashion work is one of the most beautiful work. Can you imagine I wake up every morning and I, I wake up and say, wow, Jesus Christ, I have to make beauty, I have to produce beauty. What there is better in the life? Every morning I wake up and say, I have to produce beauty. I have to be happy with beauty. I think this is it's a privilege. whatever, you know, uh, um, I do. You know, I do other projects by myself. You know, I just mentioned today, I finish a book by chance. I write a book, not because I want to be a writer, but will be published in the end of September. And uh, it was a nice experience because, you know, when you're a writer, you are by yourself and you have to go in the magic space to work. Because otherwise, if your brain is not connected, you don't touch the emotion. Because writing is very tricky because, again, you have to... The people who read the book must participate to the story. Otherwise, it doesn't make any sense. Otherwise, it's just a trip for yourself. But I was happy. But in the end, when I finished the book, which I was very, very happy, I said, no, fashion is much more for me, you know. I saw every, every day beautiful girl, beautiful boy, Nice people, beautiful color, that is my life. You know, even if I can write a book, or I can make painting, whatever, but there is nothing, for my experience, better than wake up every day and think to the beauty. It's amazing, it's just fantastic. So, it's work, but uh, it's fantastic work. You know? That was great. Thank you very, very much. Thank you.